This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Neighbor.com, which is a really great idea for rideshare drivers. What if you made an extra $10,000 every year without doing any extra work? You can earn money on Neighbor.com by renting out the space you don't use to people in need of storage or long-term parking. Like if you have a garage, a shed, driveway, or, or parking space, start monetizing it on Neighbor.com. Neighbor is free to use, and unlike your normal 9-to-5 job, Neighbor lets you earn passive income without ever leaving the comfort of your home. Neighbor also protects each host with its $2 million guarantee. So if you're looking for an additional way to earn income, check out Neighbor.com and see how much money your extra space can make you. An extra few hundred bucks each month sure comes in handy as the economy starts to open up and drivers get back on the road. Drive during the day and make passive income on Neighbor while you sleep. If you use the link in the show notes below to list your space, Neighbor will give you an extra $50 when your space gets rented. Neighbor.com is a no-brainer for side hustlers. So visit host.neighbor.com forward slash ride to get started making money today. Again, it's host.neighbor.com forward slash ride. All right, let's start the show. Welcome to the Ride Share Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. All right, all right. Hey, everybody. This is Jay Crater. Great to be with you. I'm recording this today on June 1st. It's 12.22 in the afternoon. It's Monday. And uh, how are y'all doing? It was uh, quite a weekend. The whole country is uh, seems to be rioting. We've also got a pandemic raging still. And we're all struggling to figure out a way to get back to normal. And it uh, just doesn't seem like that's going to happen any time soon. Me? I just want to travel internationally. I want to get to Ireland. I want to get back to Thailand. Not going to happen. I'm now thinking it's going to be November before I can get out of here. Six more months. Such is life. Shit happens and we got to roll with it, adapt, I Ching, roll with it, whatever. That's to qu- quote the great uh, Tom Cruise in the movie Collateral. If you haven't seen the movie Collateral, it's an excellent film. Highly recommend it. All right, we're going to talk unemployment because I am not a happy camper. No, no, I am not. Uh, I applied... Uh, let me tell you. Let me let me let me break this down for you, because you might be able to relate, and hopefully, in my sharing this experience with you, you might uh, have some ideas for yourself. So, back on March twenty second, I applied for unemployment insurance. This is before there was any CARES Act. I thought, well, what the heck? I'm going to give it a shot and see if they can classify me as an employee because of AB5 here in California, and uh, I got turned down. So I appealed. Um, when I got turned down, they basically said uh, I, I showed no earnings, and uh, because I showed no earnings, uh, I wasn't able to get anything. So I appealed. Then I was contacted by the EDD. Somebody called me from their tax department, and her job was to determine if I was an employee or not. So a uh, very nice woman. She asked me lots of questions about, you know, Lyft and could 
did Lyft tell me where to go and did Lyft uh, control how I performed my job? And um, basically everything she asked me, I said, yeah, Lyft controlled that, that aspect of my work. So that happened. We had that interview. And then she asked me for some 1099s to verify my, my revenue. <clears throat> and I said, well, let me hold off on that because at that point, the PUA announced that you could apply on the 28th of April and uh, get your money within a few days. So I thought, okay, I'm just going to hold off. Thank her for everything. Then I got something in the mail from her that said she had determined I was an employee. thought, okay, I'll just hold on to that. Then um, on May 11th, things were good. I got my debit card and my debit card had $5,938 on it. And I thought, well, this is great. <clears throat> and the way they calculated it was from my last day of work as a driver, which was February 2nd, that was uh, Super Bowl Sunday, and I was getting $167 a week, plus I was getting an additional $600 uh, starting in April. So then I thought, well, what if I could get that 167 up to 450? So I contacted that same woman and I said, you know what? Now that I'm in the system and everything seems to be working, how about I provide you my 1099s and you can get my weekly figure up to 450? So she did. She uh, got the document she needed and um, she said she, you know, submitted it and I would get something in the mail. So then last Monday came. So last Monday would have been May 25th. And normally I would have gotten another deposit. I would have gotten payment for two weeks, but I got nothing. I got nothing at all. And then I looked on the website and it said that my weekly amount had gone up to 450, but it said that the last two weeks I was disqualified, disqualified. So I thought, well, that's terrible. The whole point wasn't to have my payments stop. It was to get my payments increased. So then I contacted the EDD through the website portal where, um, you know, there's an inbox and a contact us where you can uh, pick a question category and a question topic and you can explain what's going on. So I did that. And they say it's going to take five to seven days for someone to get back to you. So then uh, one of uh, one of my uh, uh, viewers or somebody who's been watching my videos, uh, she, a woman driver, she says, "Well, here's the phone number. You can call them, and uh, once you get once you get through, you got to press uh, one for English, then six, then seven, then three. And then that, that'll put you on hold and you can actually talk to somebody. So I tried that for two hours straight. And every time I got through, then it said, uh, there are too many people waiting, so we're going to just disconnect you. So it's very frustrating. Very frustrating to have the payment stop. And then you can't do anything about it. So as of today, I have uh, left uh, four emails um, in the in, you know, through the EDD website, I've tried calling uh, four different hours and I keep getting the exact same message. I don't know how people are getting through. It seems virtually impossible. And I'm now just waiting. Uh, I, I don't know what else there is to do besides wait. Um, so it's, it's really frustrating. And what I'm, hearing from a lot of uh, drivers is they're in the same boat. Uh, they've applied and they haven't gotten anything or they've been told uh, that, that uh, they're going to get something, but they haven't gotten anything or they were denied and they've appealed and nothing's happened. Um, some states are just barely getting to where you can actually even uh, apply, right? Uh, as of, as of uh, this week, another... 2.1 million filed jobless claims last last uh, week. Um, unemployment overall has shrunk a little bit because some people are going back to work. Nevada gig workers are frustrated by unemployment system notifications. They can't get through on the phone. 
just the exact same experience I've had. Um, Uber and Lyft drivers are suing New York State over unemployment benefits because instead of it occurring in two weeks, real people apply and then they get their money within two weeks, it's taking over two months. And that's common in a lot of states, a lot of states. Um, I got a, a message here from a, a driver who said, hey, Jay, I'm a rideshare driver from Rhode Island. I've been concerned about my unemployment. I'm a full-time driver and I'm only receiving 187 Per, per week. She's in benefits. No way to contact UI. Dug out my UI determination. It states that I had 15 days to appeal, but it's been over a month. Can't get anyone on the phone. Don't see anywhere in the website where I can send my 1099s or anything. I've been waiting to see something on their website for a while, but nothing. I think I'm getting short to $3.99 per week. Uh, as the most you can get in Rhode Island is $5.85. So it's really difficult. It's really difficult. And, uh, you know, at the heart of this is Uber and Lyft, who continue to call us independent contractors, and they're not providing any information to the unemployment offices throughout the country. And then uh, the last thing I wanted to share with you is there are drivers out there who are legitimately in fear that if they collect PUA benefits, that's going to impact the lawsuits uh, that they have against Uber and Lyft. So there's a bunch of us who have hired attorneys to get back pay, get all the benefits we were entitled to uh, if we were an employee working for Uber and Lyft, because in California and a few other uh, states, um, we're, we're technically called employees, even though Uber and Lyft do not recognize us as employees. So as employees, we would be entitled to over overtime, uh, vacation pay, um, you know, minimum wage, things like that. So um, there are many drivers, though, who are afraid that if they collect the PUA benefits. So again, the PUA is the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance. That's for independent contractors, sole proprietors, um, that Uber or Lyft are going to say, well, wait a minute, you applied for the PUA benefits, therefore you, you ad admitted you're an independent contractor. So... Um, I've talked to a couple of attorneys and they said they don't really think that's going to that's going to work for Uber and Lyft because this is a difficult time and that's the only way you can get benefits because Uber and Lyft aren't playing ball with the un with the unemployment offices across the country. So we're kind of backed into a corner and the only way we can get the benefits is through the PUA um option. So um you know, I think most drivers are still still taking the PUA but they have that concern. Um, there's an article in CNBC. It says some Uber Lyft drivers fear companies will use unemployment benefits against them. Uh, they talk about one driver. He said he's afraid that applying for PUA benefits will cost him thousands of dollars in back pay. He believes he's owed by the rideshare companies for overtime hours as an employee, in addition to setting back the broader driver movement. So that's it. That's what's going on with unemployment. My recommendation is, uh, you know, just keep constantly reaching out to them. Um, I'm putting in at least like a, a half an hour of calls a day to try and get into the uh, the phone system because I've been assured that if you keep trying, you'll eventually get through. I mean, somebody's got to be getting through. They have the lines open. In California, they have them open from 8 in the morning until 12 noon. That's it. Um, and... Uh, you know, I'm going to keep sending my emails and eventually something good is going to happen. So just be proactive, keep moving forward. And uh, that's usually how good things happen. All right. All right. I want to thank you very much for uh, listening. That's a wrap. Uh, fist bump to all you drivers out there. You guys rock it every day. I honor you. Thank you for sharing your journey with me. Be safe out there. This is Jay Crater, unemployed Jay Crater saying, this episode is in the can. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.